The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship as we gather in God's house this morning, as we celebrate All Saints Day, a day that is on November 1st, and yet when we celebrate Reformation on October 31st, you can't do those always on the same date as last week we celebrated the Reformation. So today we recall how God has made us His saints, and we celebrate the saints that have gone before us and the saints that God has made us. It may be God's word that assures you of being holy in His sight and the holy, beloved saint that you are. May God bless you with His word this morning as we gather in worship. Warm welcome to everyone who is with us in worship this morning. I invite you to sign the record of fellowship. It's the red booklet at the end of each pew. Please pass that to people sitting next to you. They may have opportunity to sign that as well. As we have gathered as brothers and sisters in Christ for worship, let us also stand and greet each other with the peace of Christ. God's peace to you, Ben. By yourself here, huh? Good morning. God's peace. God's peace, Tim. Good morning. God's peace to you, Don. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> That's as good as it gets. That's all right. Yeah. Hi, Ellen. God's peace to you. Yes. God's peace to you, Vivian. God's peace to you. I should have say we're having a baptism as well. <laughs> kind of a big day. Yeah. You may be seated. The Fall Day Order service is printed in our worship folder. As on this All Saints Day, we get to sing a lot of saints' hymns, good music this morning. The choir will be singing. We have a baptism where God gets to bring the Pust family into his, makes him a saint, um, and we ask for God's blessings. Well, let's turn to our opening hymn, number 677, for all the saints. Please note in your worship folder the stanzas that men will be singing, women will be singing, the ones we will be singing all together. And we will stand for the last stanza, stanza eight, as it gives glory to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we ask the Lord to bless us this morning in worship.
congregation may be seated. We turn to page 268 for the service for holy baptism. You got your hands full there. Maybe, maybe Noah could. You're used to it. Today, as uh, we have the privilege of witnessing another uh, child of God being born into the kingdom through holy baptism, another saint in the Lord's kingdom, uh, Benjamin, his sponsor, uh, Michael, uh, Salik is not able to be with us today. I'm going to read the part for sponsors, of course, uh, as a reminder of their duty, but he's not able to be here today. And also it's a special day because Mary, uh, the mother of Benjamin's, her, her birthday today. So uh, we have a birthday and then a, a new birth here in this family, and so we're thankful to the Lord for it. So we, we continue on page 268 in the service of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How is your child named? Benjamin Mark Pust, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. We bow our heads for prayer. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all baptismal waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Benjamin according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, in which he himself has committed sins, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, at all, they are whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Together we pray the prayer our Lord has given us to pray as his family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. At this time, I would invite the congregation and uh, the parents, too, to all of us to respond to these questions that I now ask. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. You can bring Benjamin right over here. Benjamin, Mark, Pust, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Benjamin the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly, humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. The congregation may be seated. You can blow the candle out there. We have some gifts here for Benjamin, of course. And the brothers are very happy to see their brother getting baptized today. So, okay. Go back, you can go back to your places now. God's blessings to you. And let us turn to page two in our worship folder as we continue with the confession and absolution. Let us stand.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment of silence for reflection on God's word and self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me, for you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
this is the feast, the victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The scripture readings for this All Saints Day celebration, the first reading is recorded in Revelation chapter 7, beginning with verse 2. John records the vision God gave him. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Iskar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, 
Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear the choir sing. Our epistle reading is recorded in 1 John chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone thus hopes, who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of honor and respect for Jesus, let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. This time, I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. For them, boys and girls, you can come right up here to the front and sit in front of the steps. Oh, good morning, friends. It's good to see you in church this morning, as today in church, we get to celebrate a special day. We get to celebrate All Saints Day, and I want to talk about that for just a few minutes. And to help us talk about that, I have a question for you. Raise your hand if you have ever been in trouble. Have you ever done anything wrong? Oh, I think I see almost everybody's hands up. What are some of the things that we get in trouble for? What's one thing? Maybe when you say that you're going to do something and then you don't. Oh, that's a big one, is it? Say you're going to do something and then you don't. What's another one? You say you're not going to take something and then you do. What's another one? Well, you get in trouble if you don't listen. Can anybody relate to that one? We do that sometimes. What's another one? If you hit somebody, that's not good, is it? What's another one? If you disobey. If you disobey the authorities, if you don't listen to, say, your mom or your dad <laughs> speaking to my daughter. <laughs> Does that happen sometimes where we don't listen to the directions? Yeah, when we think of all those things, the, Jesus gives a name for all those things when we do something wrong. And Jesus calls it sin. The Bible calls it sin. And we need to think about that. Jesus calls us to think about our sin and the things that we have done wrong. In fact, in church, we sometimes have a moment where everybody is quiet. The pastor said something beforehand, the congregation responds, and you do that for a little bit, then all of a sudden the pastor says, we take a moment of silence for reflection on God's word and self-examination. Do, do you remember those times in church when we have to be quiet? And do you know what we think about in those quiet times? Is all the things we have done wrong. We think about our sin. And to help us think about that, to help you think about that, I brought a piece of paper with me. You see what that paper says on the top? Can you read that? It says sinner, doesn't it? And I'm going to give each one of you a piece of paper like this. And on this side, maybe you can't read, so I got a, I got a, 
a frowny face on that one to help you know which side to think of. But on this side, you can draw pictures of all those things that you've done wrong. Or maybe all those things that we get in trouble for. All those things that Jesus does not want us to do. That's sinful. And we all are sinful. In fact, that's why Jesus, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And when Jesus died on the cross, what did he take away? What did he take away? Sin. He took away all of your sins. He took away all of the sins of all the people here. And he took away all the sins of all the people in this world. That's how much Jesus loves every person, doesn't he? And when Jesus takes away all of your sin, do you know what you are? You are forgiven. You are holy. Or to say it a different way, you are a saint. Did you know that? A saint is somebody who is holy. Somebody who is forgiven by Jesus. And on this side of the piece of paper, with a smiley face that says saint, you can draw a picture of how you are holy in God's sight. In fact, the Bible reading just talked about that. It was a vision that God gave to his servant John, and there were many people who were wearing white robes, and they were in heaven. And John asked, who are these? And, and John responded, and he says, you know. And, and the person who was speaking to John said, these are the ones who are coming out of the great tribulation. These are God's people who have washed their robes in the blood of Jesus, and he has made them holy, forgiven. He has made them a saint. And that's who God has made you. He has made you holy. He has made you his saint. That's how much he loves you. Because it is the blood of Jesus that washes away all of your sin. And one day, one day you're never going to get in trouble. One day, you are going to be perfect in God's kingdom forever. When Jesus returns or when he calls us home in death. And then we don't ever have to worry about this side of the piece of paper. There will be no sin when Jesus returns. Today, today you can write down on this side of the paper all the things we do that we shouldn't do. And on this side with the saint, you can draw a picture of how you are holy in God's sight. Maybe you're going to draw a cross. Maybe you can draw yourself wearing a white robe that Jesus promises to give you to show how you are holy, perfect, forgiven in God's sight because of Jesus. Before I give you a piece of paper and you go to your seats, we bow our heads and fold our hands and let's say a prayer of thanking Jesus for making us holy and forgiven. You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and taking away all of my sin. Help me to always remember that I am your holy saint. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the children are getting their coloring sheets, as a congregation we turn to sing our next hymn, we'll stand for the last stanza as it gives glory to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Before you return to your seats, you guys want a coloring sheet? You can take one. There's one. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good job. There you go.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please take your seats. The text for the sermon today on All Saints Observation, All Saints Sunday today, is the second reading from 1 John chapter 3. We hear these words again. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, members of Trinity, our guests and visitors here with us, I want to start the sermon today with your help. So what we're going to do this morning is I'm going to begin a very familiar phrase that we all know and we've all said before, and I want you to join in with me after you hear the beginning and then you just join right in nice and loud and I'll stop you when I want to stop you so let's give this a try ready I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church the communion of Saints stop right there whenever we say those words the Holy Christian Church the communion of saints, we are speaking about what we see now. 
And we also are speaking about what we will see then. The Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Let's begin with what we see now. What do we see? What do we see? Even right here, we see it. We see fellow believers gathered together in God's house, coming together to worship our Lord. We see people who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We see a portion, a small portion, of the Holy Christian Church. What else do we see? We see around us fellow sinners who have gotten into trouble at different times, who have this problem that we're born with, that we have this tendency to turn away from the Lord. And so we gather together as fellow sinners to receive God's assurance of forgiveness in Jesus Christ our Lord, who loved us and died for us and rose again for us. And so we know that in him our sin has been cleansed, and he has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. He takes our sin away, all of our sin away, as we heard in the children's message. He purifies us, he makes us holy, and in him it's true that we are saints. And we join in giving thanks to God. And so, yes, today what we see is a small portion of the communion of saints. Our text today speaks about this. In verse 1 it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are we see God's love in making us his children. And we saw that right away this morning. We saw in it with our own eyes God's love in making Benjamin his child. Benjamin's out taking a break right now, it looks like. But that's okay. Nevertheless, though, he has been loved by the Lord, and we know that God has made him his child, even as he has made us his children. At our baptism... This gift of God, where he brings us into his family, makes us his children, brings us into the the communion of saints. Or for others, sometimes it happened first through the word of the gospel, where God had shown that word into a person's heart and mind and brought them to faith and made them his dear child through that means. And of course, baptism also. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. We see God's love in all kinds of ways. He made this wonderful world that we live in. He shows us his love by enabling us to enjoy the beauty of creation. He's given us our life. He's given us our body and our soul, our eyes and ears, our mouth, our reason, our senses. He's given us everything we need to keep us going in life, giving us health and sustenance. He's given us the blessing in his love of relationships with others, our family, our children, parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters. All of these are signs of God's love to us that we see right now. And even in the congregation, the communion of saints, the Holy Christian Church, We see people around here that are maybe not related to us as a father or mother or a grandparent, but yet they are, as a member of the family of God, they're like parents to us and grandparents who encourage us and guide us and help us in our lives. And these are things that we see right now. And we're thankful on this All Saints Day for it. But there's something else that we also see right now, and we find it mentioned in the text this morning. We see a world in opposition to the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. It seems maybe to us that the world is growing more hostile to God's saints on earth as time goes on. We were talking about this in our Thursday morning Bible study as we gather together at 10.30 on Thursday morning. We're studying through the large catechism of Martin Luther and we have really interesting conversations in that study. The other, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about 
What a contrast it is today from when we were younger, and I'm the youngest one in that group. So we remember those days when Christians were looked upon with respect. If somebody was going to hire somebody and it was a Christian, they say, well, at least I can trust them. They're a good person. They're going to be honest. And that's how people would look at Christians, by and large, in those days, as I recall and as we all recalled. And now today, it seems that more and more people are looking down, at Christi- down on Christians. They, they see them as simple-minded or maybe stupid. Christians these days seem to be branded as racist and judgmental and condemning and unloving. These days, Christians seem are seen as people that you can't trust and people who just want to take the rights of other people away. It just seems to be that way more and more today. Would you agree? But according to God's word in our text, it's maybe not something that's new at all because we have this in in this text today. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. This has been going on for a long time. Jesus spoke about persecution of his people. And so we are familiar with that. But we see a world that is in opposition to the church, a world that is people who don't see what we see. They don't see the creative hand and the gracious hand of God working in the world. We see a world that trusts in science, even though it changes and is revised regularly, they don't see or trust in the one who put everything together that science might even start to study. We see a world that doesn't know the love and the forgiveness of God our Savior. Instead, they see Jesus as just a man of history who is remembered because he had a few wise sayings. We see a world that doesn't know us because it didn't know him. This can be discouraging. This can be disheartening. It can be very frustrating. But worse, it can be tempting. Yes, I said tempting. Sometimes God's saints turn in their holiness to follow and join the world. Sometimes God's saints leave their blood-bought forgiveness behind to follow a world and its false promises of satisfaction or meaning. And when that happens, the fallen saints of God are exchanging the true God for an idol. One of the most, in my view, most, one of the most significant things that Jonah said, you remember the prophet Jonah who didn't want to do what God wanted him to do and he ran the other way and God He wound up in the belly of the fish in chapter 2. That was probably his best time in the belly of the fish and where he prays. And he said this in verse verse 8 of chapter 2. He says, Those who worship worthless idols forfeit the mercy that could be theirs. They forfeit the mercy that God wants them to have. And so we pray, O Lord, keep us faithful to your to you, our faithful Lord and Savior, that we would never forfeit your mercy. Help us to be faithful and give witness to the world that's in opposition to us. Help us to be faithful and know the blessings that you promise even to those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. These are the things that we see now. Beloved, we are God's children now, as it says, and what we will be has not yet appeared. So there's more ahead of us. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. On this All Saints Day, we think of what we will see then also when we leave this place and fly to our true home in heaven. One of the difficult things in this life, though, in this world of sin and death, is that we look around and we no longer see certain people. We look around and we miss those beloved people in our lives, a parent, a child, a relative, a friend. 
people that we depended upon, people that we learned from, people that guided us and helped us in life, people that maybe brought us into the kingdom through God's means as they brought us to Jesus, that he would bless us. And because of death, we are separated from them now. This is a painful and sad truth that no one can deny. And this is why it's so important that we turn to our Savior. This is why we need a Savior. This is why we need to gather together here in God's house also to be strengthened in our hope in Jesus and also to share and proclaim that hope to others in the world. We have a tradition here at Trinity that on All Saints Sunday that we list and read the names of those who died in the faith. They're in your bulletin. I'm going to read those names from the pulpit today. As you hear these names read, you will remember them, maybe. Maybe you don't know them. Maybe they were very close to you. And it's been difficult, as you think, it's not been that long since they've been taken away. And so there can be some sadness as we hear these names, but also let there be gladness and joy because of God's promise to us in Jesus and the victory that he gives to us. And so, in thanks to God and honor of these saints, I read the names now. Ronald Kessler. Joseph Utz. Polly Vernis, Martha Wallenberg, Fred Pierce, Les Kircher, Olga Fox, Marlis Bufford, Marjorie Pullman, Ronald Meyer, Sarah Ostlin, Jeannie Woodard, Lester Hudson, Saul Kober, Renee Kircher, Teresa Putman, Sylvia Havner, James Hansen, Mark Gintner. I believe in the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Yes, we are speaking about what we now see, but also what we will see then. What will we see then? God's Word tells us today. A great multitude that no one can number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And in this great multitude, we will see all of our loved ones who have gone before us in the faith. And we will be reunited with them forever. Then we will enjoy eternal life without the pain and sorrow, without the danger and loss, without the problems and troubles that we know so well here now. Because then we will experience life without sin. We'll never get in trouble again, as Pastor said. We will be with Jesus. And this will be how we will be like him. We will be pure and perfect with sin no longer there. Then we will see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who will welcome us with open arms and will hold us fast to himself forever. To God be the glory and may God grant this unto us all. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we worship our Lord with our offerings, and we continue with the next hymn.
included in the prayer guide, especially for Julie Seaford, who had successful surgery last week and is recovering. For John Modi, who is having some health and balance issues, we pray for God's healing. We also pray for Harley Ketterling. His son, Tim, stopped in the office on Friday. Harley has um, been placed on hospice care, uh, not because he especially needs it, but it opens up more opportunities for care from nurses and health professionals as his mobility has decreased rather significantly. We also pray for the family and friends of Roger Mullen. That's Leslie Mullen's husband. Leslie is the oldest daughter of the Kircher family, and she lives in Columbus, where Roger's uh, funeral service most likely will be. So let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Please stand for prayer. We pray. O oh, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things into your keeping. In your righteousness, deliver us from all that would harm the body and assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, bless your church. Feed her with your holy word that she may be comforted with all the promises of Jesus and assured of life and forgiveness by his death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know of your deep love for us, for you have called us your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations that they may raise their children in accordance with your holy word. Sustain all expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, bless all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Grant courage and competence to our leaders. And this week, as our nation holds elections, Give wisdom to citizens who will be voting and making decisions that will affect laws and life. Guide the election process. The laws would be followed and the results be peacefully honored and respected. And as we see the results, O oh Lord, continue to remind and assure us that all authority comes from you and you appoint leaders according to your purpose. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Almighty God, you give leaders the responsibility and authority to protect citizens under their care. This week, as we remember Veterans Day, we remember the sacrifices that men and women made as they fought and defended our freedom. We are grateful for their service. We ask that you would bring healing to those who struggle with the effects of war and the suffering they have witnessed and give protection to those who continue to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our rock and fortress in our distress. Hear our prayers for those who are sick, suffering, or recovering. So we ask that you would bring healing to Sharla, George, Maylin, Tim, Katie, Catalea, Marilyn, Walter, Betty, Janet, Diana, Brittany, Beverly, Peter, Keith, Harley, Sonia, Dee, Don, Tammy, Don, Gary, Judy, JC, John, Kinsley, Ginny, Julie, John, the family and friends of Roger, and all who we name silently in our hearts and minds. Heavenly Father, bring healing to these, your children, according to your gracious will, as we also come before you in thanksgiving for the 50 years of faithful marriage and service you have granted to Pastor Bruce and Kathy Zagel. Continue to bless them and all who are married, that they may continue to live in faithfulness to you and one another. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, though death still claims our mortal bodies, you have raised up Christ, that we may pass through death to our own joyful resurrection and to the great reunion with those who have died in the faith and now rest from their labors. Receive our thanks for all the saints, for their faithful witness and their faithfulness. As we remember your saints today, may we also be strengthened and encouraged to live faithfully, trusting in your promises until you bring us at last into your kingdom, where we will see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Having prayed the Lord's Prayer during the service of holy baptism, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We turn to our sending hymn number 671. The choir will sing the first stanza. and to have this opportunity to reach out to our community. We also would love to meet you as well, and so we would like to invite you to come to our church and participate in, uh, with us in worship and Bible study. You know, as many scripture 
passages that talk about being together as God's people. And Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, he is present. And we invite you to be with us in Bible study and fellowship times. You can see those on our website at trinitybillings.org. But also join us for worship. We have worship on Saturday evening at 5 o'clock and on Sunday morning at 8 and 10.30 with Bible study at 9.30 in between. We'd love to have you join us together as the family of God here at Trinity Lutheran Church. If there's any way that we can help you or meet any needs that you have, please call us at 406-245-3984. And God's blessings on your day.